Okay, so we have Arthur Hayes of Westgate fame. So, Arthur, tell us how you started in the hobby. Oh, well, trains have always been my interest, even as a kid, and something I used to watch. And I guess I had a train set at probably 12. Wow. And uh, good old trying. And uh, I wore it out, and of course, I always just, uh, I always sort of used to look for the local, what I used to see in the local railway, which was Queensland Rail in southwest Queensland, a place called Charleville. And that's where the name mm. Westgate comes from, mm. because it's a junction, just not far from Charleville, where the Coopie Kalamala line branch. So this is a junction, so it's got Westgate. All the station names, all W, and their names of stations, it's between mm. Charleville, Coopie and Kalamala. So, but, you know, mm. I've always sort of made everything have a Queensland flavour. So, probably about 70, 72, I decided, well, that's enough, I'll make my own stuff. <laughs> and that's where it all goes to from there, is I make my own rolling stock or kits or whatever I can that's Queensland rail. Okay, and, and um, so you've been building this layout for the last 40 years. Well, the rolling stock, um, the rolling stock, I've sort of been building it for about 40 years. Right. But the layout itself, we didn't start on the layout until the boys left home. Uh, used to be table tennis here, table mm. tennis table, and they played table tennis. And when they left home, mm. uh, I had a room uh, 20 by 10 for a layout. And seeing I had New South Wales and I had Queensland, so it become a layout so I could basically test run what I built. That's what it all started out is so that I could build stuff and then work, put it on the layout and make sure that it did operate the way it should operate. And of late, I've turned it into a shunt layout and with systems of shunting mm -hmm. and I can run shunt trains as well now. So I get the operations, I build some things, I build something, build it into an operations program and yeah. So did you want to briefly talk about how you, you operate your layout with your shunt, shunt list and... Yeah, well I've got two, two, shunt, two shunt types. One, one I've used the um, labels, the original QR labels. Mm -hmm. I've used that and then I've used a section out of the work and timetable and make up the trains where they've got to be made up in station order. Mm. And another one I use is just a card that gives you a train already made up. And it has um, the train list, which is what every train has as a train list, and the tr crew carry that. Mm. It's also got a timetable, so you can pace yourself against the fast clock, mm. which is what real railways mm. did. They ran into a timetable. Yep. And then there's an instruction list at the bottom that tells you what you've got to detach mm -hmm. and where it's got to be placed and what you've got to pick up. And, and also, just to make it interesting, every now and then a train turns up that's in the timetable that you've got sort of got to leave a section of the yard clear to let it through. Right. So it, yeah. it's sort of a real prototypical yeah. thing, the way it QR did it. Right, so it makes things really interesting. Oh, yeah. And adds a bit of variety. Yeah, that adds variety yeah. and the cards are in such a way that you can um, make, do it four different ways. Yeah. Sort of thing, one of them I've got is you go around as an up train and then you come back as a down train. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you sort of do the shunts one way and then come back and do the shunts the other way. Yeah. Just the way they used to do it QR, trains would shunt one way, turn around and yeah. come back the next that afternoon, chuck, come towards the city and pick up all their freight. Okay, so and going back to your layout, your the track plan was it designed from day one, or have you sort of added to it and made changes? No, the basically from day one, um, I just I wanted um, something that gave me continuous running for both standard and narrow gauge. Mm -hmm. Plus, I wanted something that I could use as a shunt layout and give me continuous because some mm. days you don't want to shunt That's and right. some yeah. days you just want to see trains go around through mm. the scenery mm. 
yeah. and that's what I and so but the yard nothing from the, from when I started and to what it is now it hasn't changed it's, it's still the same same yeah. maybe when I was building it and a few things got added <laughs> you know because initially the Queensland yard was only got to have was only going to have six tracks but anyway I saw when I was building it oh, I could get seven in it. <laughs> So it got there, but you know, and and, and but it, the concept hasn't really changed. Mm. And and you know, it was like the standard gauge. I I only got into the standard gauge because the guy in the club, Arthur Robinson, he he was making um, kits, and um, every now and then I'd get a brown paper packet of seconds and. So I started oh. modelling New South Wales, and of course it's developed from there. Oh. Oh. And but Queensland is my main interest. But I put something on here so I could run my standard gauge, and it's only an oval, oh. and it's got sidings, and and I can, you know, make I can have seven, seven to eight set trains, and I just swap them oh. around, and two of them I generally make up as shunt trains. And, and what I do is run one and while it's running I make up the other train and the other one comes back in and I can break it up and the other one runs. So it, it sort of... You, you've done a fantastic job on your layout and you said it's an oval but basically it doesn't look like an oval because you've added cosmetic curves and you've hidden certain sections. Yeah. How did you learn about that? Yeah, well I go to conventions and um, I've been to a few conventions in New Zealand and, and they used to have guest speakers from um, the UK and the US and and some of them have written books and some of them are uh, professional modelers, that's what they do is they build mm. layouts. Mm. And and so what I've tried to do is sort of, okay, I can't build the whole Queensland mm. Rail, but what you can do is sort of have cameo scenes mm -hmm. and uh, just sort of give you a little bit of uh, something between the scenes which gives you gives you that uh, impression you've got distance between the between the, your sort of stations and, and where you're going mm -hmm. and I sort of put some curves in it so that it just wasn't an oval of track mm -hmm. the standard gauge is it's just an oval yeah. but the narrow gauge which you see the lot mm -hmm. I've sort of sort of put some curves in it and I put the stations on the curves and yeah. and the points are laid in the reverse so that I get longer crossing loops right. instead of being the crossing loop verging off the straight the, the crossing loop verges off the curve mm, okay. so the main the straight often is not the main line the curve is <laughs> see oh, you okay. know, and that, so that way you can sort of sneak a bit of distance right. yeah yeah and that's yeah. how a lot of it's done okay okay yeah. and You've obviously come a long way since you've started. You're now the you have an, a number of accolades, and you've reached a elite group of modelers. Um, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, well, that's something I was never never going to do. Um, I've always been interested in promoting the hobby, and I've always you know, for forty odd years I've been in clubs and. And I've always, a lot of the time, I've held positions on the committees and been organised in um, running model railway exhibitions and, and doing conventions. So to, to me, all I want to really do is to sort of promote the hobby for yeah. others so yeah. that, OK, and this is something that, you know, QR's not a lot of it around, but I wanted to sure show that, hey, it can be done. and. Um, but, you know, the accolades, well, yes, you know, I guess you're in the right place at the right time and things come change and I guess when I retired um, I had a bit more time on my hands and, and things to, to sort of go and get a few um, AP certificates mm. and yes, the MMR eventually flowed out and there's still more I can do. I'm not, I'm not finished yet. I think I've only... There's only seven certificates, and I think all up there's 13, so I've still got a few more to go yet. Okay. Um, so what would, what are some of, some advice you'd give youngsters who want to get into a hobby and are starting off? Yeah, yes. What are some of the tracks, for example? Oh, well, you know, there's a, 
could be traps or anywhere, but you know, just um, you know, don't run into it, jump into it two feet, sort of mm. have a look about and talk to people and have a look at what people are doing. Um, more or less, have a look at what people are doing more so than what people are saying, <laughs> because uh, you know, I'm sort of saying, uh, you know, people people think things will work. But unless you see it working, mm. uh, it may not, may not work. And what are some of the lessons you learned whilst you were um, in this hobby and sort of maturing? What some are, of the lessons. <laughs> what are some lessons or mistakes or regrets? That, that, I guess some of the things, you know, I sort of sit and, and look at things for a long time before I do it, and and. I guess the, the part is that it's, I'm trying to pluck up courage to, because I'm frightened that it's not going to work. But, you know, after you sort of kick it around for a little while and, and uh, like that little pawpaw I've just finished, there's, there's, you know, for those who've seen it on the net and that, um, yep, it's been in the cupboard for 20 years and I sort of, yes, how am I going to do it? What am I going to do it? But you know, have a go. Yeah, that's that's the main thing. And you know. even though it may seem daunting at first, the worst you can do is maybe make a mistake and start over again. Well, yeah, and, and when once once you've made a mistake and things haven't turned out, well, you know what not to do. Mm. You, yeah, know. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and and you know, try you know and talk to somebody and you know discuss it and and you'll find that. Um, you know, you'll get, you'll conquer it, and, mm. and that, that's, I guess, like in the certificates and that, you, you sort of, there's criteria that you've got to meet, and you sort of wonder how you're going to meet it, mm. but when you talk to people and, and you have a go, um, yeah, it, mm. you, can, you surprise yourself sometimes what, mm. what you do to do achieve. Mm. You know, I'm still... Yeah, I'm no engineer and um, sometimes if you have a look some straight lines are not quite straight but you know that's all a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay now and getting back to your layout tell us how big is it? Yeah, it's a single car garage so it's 20 feet long by 10 wide. Um, basically for the standard gauge I wanted three foot radius curves. There is a grade in it because there is a plan to extend it one day, so one track had to go over the top of the other. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing QR was 12 mil and probably not as advanced in a lot of areas as, as the New South Wales or the Stanger Gauge. So it's got the, the grade on it, and that's basically 1 in 50. So although it's one in 50, it probably takes up the full length of each side. <laughs> so it's not down for long, but it goes down, it goes under the other, the 12 mil can go over the top of it and onto another module if I want to at a later date. Right. And but, how wide is your bench work? Um, I think it's 30 inches. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% not sure, it's, it's different on one side to the other, but I wanted to make it so that I could reach mm -hmm. And generally, if I stand on a chair or something, I can generally get to the far parts of it. But uh, if, you, if you do a good, take a bit of care in putting your track down, um, you you'll, won't have a lot of trouble. You know, I, I reckon good track is, is the essence to a good good operating railway. So you'd say accessibility is important as well? Oh, um, it certainly is. Yeah. You've got to be able to get to it. Like initially, I designed having I designed this with an angle underneath for the narrow gauge, uh, for the stand gauge to go to another area. And after I had it a little while, I decided that that wasn't a real good idea. And mm. that that set of points have come out of the equation, and uh, the plans I had there won't happen because. If you can't see a set of points, well, um, you're going to have trouble sooner or later. And mm. So I've made it so that all my points are accessible. Right. Yeah. Excellent. And how many pieces of rolling stock do you have? Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> Over 200? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I think there's 
nearly 150 QR rolling stock, mm. and I'd, I'd probably nearly have the same in New South Wales. Mm. Mm. Not a lot. Of, I don't have a lot of locos, you know. Although you know, this comes out, that comes mm. out, and mm. it's probably I've probably got more than I think I have. You know. <laughs> And I bought some to do things with and, and haven't because you know, things have changed. Mm. The hobby is sort of yeah. you know, getting better and better and other, so some of the older stuff I've got here to, to play with will probably never get mm. you know, I'll never modify it, you know. Yeah. Because the standard has got so big, all so good. Mm. Mm. So is there anything else you would like to share your thoughts and anything? to do with model railways with the general community? Oh, well, it, 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 it can be a lot of fun. You can learn a lot from it. Model railways, I feel, is a hobby of hobbies mm. because you can sort of, yep, you can do the real prototype operations that mm. I do from time to time, but uh, you got to source information, so quite often it's going out with a camera, so mm. you learn a bit of photography. You learn a little bit about electronics, mm. so it touches it, a lot of areas. Oh, carpentry and yeah, well, you know, you yeah. got to learn to put History. a bit of nail into a bit of wood, mm. um, then screw things up. Mm. Um, um, so, so there's a lot, lot in it, and you know, you can, I guess, major in certain parts of it if you really want mm. to. You know, I know guys who are, who are electronic wizards and. That's that's what they're in the hobby for is, is for the for what they can sort of achieve in, in electronics mm -hmm. or how they can sort of do this and do that mm -hmm. and you know others do it for other reasons mm -hmm. so um, yeah no it's a great hobby and there's plenty of scope and mm -hmm. and you'll learn a lot in it I can tell you well thank you so much Arthur for our visit today and to take some footage of your layout. Um, it's always a pleasure and a joy coming here and being your layout. Yep, no, many thanks. Okay. Much appreciated. Thank you.